Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Screen Sanctum and Happy New Year. I hope you all had a great New Year's Eve, safe, healthy, and let's just shoot into 2003 with positive vibes. I hope everyone has a great year and had a great year. Um, we'll see what happens. Today, we're going to react to Season 1, Episode 11 of Community. This one is The Politics of Human Sexuality. It says, Britta challenges Jeff to find a date. Shirley and Britta help Annie with the presentation for a health fair. Let's see what can and will go off the rails in this episode. I'm looking forward to it. Love watching the series with you all. And I really feel like if I wasn't doing weekly videos, I probably would be up to like season three by now. But um, I got to do it one at a time. Don't have the time to record that many episodes at once. So let's get into um, Community Season 1, Episode 11, right about now. So I booked a sketch artist, an improv troupe, and there will be a laser projecting a burning pelvis onto the ceiling. <laughs> Greendale, <laughs> what? Greendale STD. <laughs> you stick to quote movie lines. I'll stick to sports. Trying to reduce my pop cultural referencing. Well, you're not moving into sports. Casual friend and I are going to have a non-romantic breakfast if you'd like to join us. Casual friend. Nice. Fortune cookie? Oh, the STD fair 09. You know the toilets in the women's bathrooms don't have seats, right? Take a note. I want hidden cameras in every stall. Oh my god. You will get AIDS. Flip it over. Unless you go to the STD fair. I wrote that. Oh my god. That is wild. Well, I have a new girlfriend. Oh, she's Ooh. super smart, if you know what I mean. Unfortunately, I always know what you mean. Troy and I play basketball. It's fun. Don't gloat. It's impossible <laughs> to guard you. Your eyes are too gentle and mysterious. Ha! <laughs> Eating tonight with my new girlfriend. Oh. Oh. You got that from I doubt it? What she do? She's an escort. Oh. Some mysteries solve themselves, don't they? Yeah. No, no. I met her in my marketing class. And I'm taking her to Andy's mixer tonight. Probably couldn't get a date anyway. Ooh. That's a challenge. I'm sure you're right. Ooh. Maybe it has something to do with crabs. Don't know the precise date, Pierce, because I'm not you, so there's no receipt. Ooh. That was a better joke than the last one. In recognition of all your hard work, I have decided that you should conduct the condom demonstration. What Show the? Everyone, how to put a condom on a, uh, uh, well, what my dad. Wiener. Him, Jimmy Carter. <laughs> Don't worry, not a real one. No, it's a. Anatomically correct model, you know. Hmm. <laughs> I thought it was gonna be like a banana or something. Hey, it's Jeff Winger. Carl Wash, redhead. That's funny. I wanted to see what you were doing tonight. You'll never learn a valuable lesson about trust, Jennifer. <laughs> Redhead, two top <laughs> REM concert. At least you have mommy in here. It's not my mom. Dude. <laughs> cool. What are you doing? <laughs> Hot blonde Spanish class. You're welcome. <laughs> That's actually pretty funny. It's pretty shallow. You're right. I can't believe I haven't seen it before now. Everyone in their 20s went through that phase. Unfortunately, Jeff is not in his 20s, but it's still pretty funny. The 
Dean wants me to demonstrate proper use of a condom at the stupid <coughs> fair by putting one on a mannequin's stupid thingamabob. But I'm gonna screw it up. Well, it's easy enough to practice. Britta, do you have a banana? Do you have a banana? She's so cute. Real whatchamacallits are nothing like bananas. Are they? Uh, that's what I figured. Virgin in this day and age is something to be proud of. You're like a unicorn. I had relations with my high school boyfriend. We did it to Madonna's erotica. And he wouldn't let me look at it. And cry. That's so weird. He's gay now. I think he was gay then. <laughs> he was gay now then. They're going to break out the model so she can learn how to put a condom on it. That's hilarious. How about you? Uh, were you ever able I'm conflicted right now. Does he really have no, a date? No, because I didn't try. Don't worry about it, kid. That is kind of odd, actually. From my experience, they don't last any more than 12, 13 years. Wheel of what? No gonorrhea, please, 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 no gonorrhea. Our horse is the most beautiful creatures. They're so majestic. Totally. I was thinking about oh, how I Lord. was in a quick gallop this weekend. Do you own a horse? Can you ever really own a horse? Pierce. Now, that really Serena. worked. About 30 seconds after you walked away, I asked her to be my date for the fair, and she said yes. This is Doreen. Ready for our double date? Yes, I am. Wait, how'd you do that? Senor! <laughs> Check out these condoms. All along the side, it says, Green Nail! Hmm? Exclamation point. My idea. I can't believe you beat me again! You want my stuffed animal? Yeah. We're arm wrestling! No. Well, he is furious time. right now. I'm not sure of all the rules. Don't I need a semi-truck and a ten-year-old son? Uh, oh, don't get beat in public. The score isn't right. There we go. There it is. A public shaming. Or will he let him win? Will he let him win? Oh no. Oh man. <laughs> I love them. <laughs> He's so mad. Okay, Mission Impossible style. Steal a mannequin dick. Damn, his office doesn't even have a doorknob. Oh yeah, the hard she blows. <laughs> I'm the one that needs to see. Okay, 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 okay. okay. <laughs> She's got gloves on. Oh boy. <laughs> oh, I had it wrong. Oh, God. What in the reverse porkies is going on here? Reverse porkies. That's funny. Be right back. I have to make tinkle. Oh, my. That's uncomfortable. Come on, Sabrina's cute, but she thinks that Monty Python is the evil snake from Harry Potter. <laughs> she sees right through him. Doreen. It was very nice to meet you. You can do better. Aw. She's such a good person. She's right. Oh, come on, Pierce. Uh, oh, they already left? What a couple of nincompoops. 
I'm going to go to the bar, and uh, you can join me if you'd like, and we can still have a lovely evening, but it will cost you 200 bucks. Aw. <sighs> you ruined it. That is a pretty big discount. It looks like the STD fair is turning. I was just gonna say, turn into a fuck fest. Okay, I'm just gonna turn them around, and we're gonna. Cut them <laughs> okay, ladies, I am shocked. Yeah. So everybody. Penis. penis. She didn't say it. Now, why did you break in to see the penis? Wow. This is a judgment-free zone, so express yourself. You know what? I don't want to express myself. P word, I like <laughs> being repressed. I am totally comfortable being uncomfortable with my sexuality. Yeah. If everyone were a little that bit more That makes sense. Me, we wouldn't have to have an STD fair. You go, girl. I'm glad she stood up for herself. Okay. Now that I've gotten a good look at one, I don't see what all the fuss was about. Uh, professor. Mm. I'm not a professor. But you're at Greendale, and you're old. Oh, shit. I guess I can make an exception, Professor. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> now he's not interested. <laughs> you know, uh, I can't do this. What? I like the attention to detail with the fogged up windows. Oh my god, they're having a foot race now. Uh. It was just a flu guy won those other games. Oh. Again, I bet it's too pure. Oh, oh no. Everyone's getting preggers in it. <laughs> oh my god, that's not good. As the best athlete on campus, I need you to run to my office and make an announcement before everyone leaves. I know you let me win the race. But you didn't say anything. <laughs> That's because they're great I friends. To be true. You are. For the love of God, run! <laughs> they're the best, man. Go, Abed, go! <laughs> Again, I could wa I could watch a series of just them. I mean, a man reaches a point in his life where he stops. Looking for a place to hang his underwear and starts looking for a place to hang his hat. Pierce with some words to live by? She said if I wanted to continue the night, I'd have to pay. <laughs> oh, man, that, that is rough. Did not treat her right. I have stuff to work on, you know. Oh, looks like there. both Jeff and Pierce learned the lesson. So, could I borrow 200 bucks? <laughs> you know, <clears throat> is that a friendship blossoming? Two fifty, if you don't finish telling me. <laughs> <laughs> is he gonna change the name? Uh, okay, Jeff. I see you. If you're going to have sex tonight, don't use condoms. <laughs> Oh man, technically Abed didn't lie. To donate or accept a proton cannot be quantified for individual species. Comparing two donor acceptor systems plus H2O. Was he like reading him a, a bedtime story? Or trying to make him go to sleep? Why are they the best? Why are they the best friends? It's so beautiful. Abed? Yeah, Troy? Can you get me a glass of water? Mm, sure. <sighs> Go. 
Come on with those two. They're so good. Like, ah, oh, the, the friend dynamic is so good with them. It's how we act with our friends. Like, even we have rivalries, you know? When I was 18, 19, 20, me and my best friends, baseball rivalries, football rivalries, you're still best friends. You don't want, you want to be better than them, but like, it's so nice. It's like really pure to see that relationship. And I will say it every episode. I love them too as best friends. Abed and Troy are great. Abed and Troy forever. But um, this episode 11, I believe, is literally the middle of the season. I have the list up. I think there's 22. Okay, I'm always wrong. There's 25 episodes. But episode 11 is right towards the middle of the season. And from keeping up with the last couple of episodes, we see this um, common thread of at least Jeff and I think Pierce becoming more mature, even though Pierce is a lot older, he should be more mature, but we have Jeff now, just by looking at his phone with the names in the phone, like that. that is Jeff from episode one. That was his whole mentality, pretty much. He had just met Britta and put, him, put her in his phone, you know, as hot blonde in, you know, the Spanish class. And he's come kind of full circle really quick. I didn't expect it to happen this fast, but he's starting to learn how, as Pierce said, you're, you're getting older. I mean, in this, I think he's late twenties or thirties, you know, he should be more mature. Obviously it doesn't mean if you're single in that age, you can't have fun, but it seems like he's had fun his whole life. And now he's, He's finally seeing that there's more to life than that. Um, when he was in the car with the girl, I think it just hit him like a ton of bricks. That Not that he's old, like an old man, but I feel like she was kind of using him at first. She wanted, I don't know, she wanted to sleep with the teacher, maybe to get better grades, who knows. But he was the one in that situation being used as like man meat when his whole life he's been the one just using women um you know at his expense just to sleep with them or whatever it is and again it's totally fine but now that the shoe is on the other foot it seems like jeff kind of had an awakening and it was a nice little chat with him with jeff and pierce you know that man to man jeff had to learn that there's more to life you know now he should be finding someone to settle down with. Um, even though technically you're never too old or young to do whatever you want, basically. But, you know, Pierce is dropping some knowledge there. And then Pierce kind of actually learned a little something. And from the beginning of this season, Pierce has kind of been not like someone who slept around with multiple women. Obviously, he's older but he was infatuated with Shirley. And I never thought that he would get over that. I thought that was going to be like the thing in this series, you know, that he's always, he's just tries to get with Shirley. But there was a point where he got over that. Last episode we saw, he was really mentoring her and had a uh, public speak. And that was wonderful. And in this episode, they play it for comedy, because the girl that he's with, or the woman that he's with, is an escort. But she's older. I don't think she's quite Chevy Chase's age. But she's not 20, obviously. She's more mature. She's an escort. But she was there as a date, you could tell. Because after he spilled the martini on her, she was through uh, with him as, I guess, a partner. Because even if you're an escort, you could just you could still obviously have boyfriend, girlfriend, partners, etc. And um, it seemed like he did he was really into her, but he he's he was older and not mature, right? And she saw that Jeff should be acting 
more mature or he could do better than the girl that he was with at that STD party. And that makes sense. I like that she was like the down to earth character that saw both of them, Pierce and Jeff, you know, for what they really are. Um, I will say it is intriguing to be at a point where I agree that Jeff could do better than that when 11 episodes ago, <laughs> I hated him. Um, that's a testament to the writing. Um, they really quickly did a 180 with his character, I think. And he is still um, not obnoxious. Uh, I can't think of the word right now, but he's still into himself. And he's still, you know, trying to play the field. And um, even though he's not trying to get with Britta anymore, um, he's not as douchey as they used to write him. You know, he's, I feel like he's a normal person now rather than a stereotypical, you know, male dirtbag douche character. So I feel like the writing has definitely turned around. It's really, really good now. Um, same with Pierce. He was just an old, an old man, multiple divorces, infatuated with Shirley. And then, you know, he, Feels like he did find somebody, but he ruined it. Uh, but he kind of, I feel like he acknowledged that he did because I don't think he would have paid the $200, $250, even though he borrowed the money. I don't think he would have even bothered paying it to spend the rest of the night with her. Um, I think he did that because he genuinely just wanted to spend time with her. I don't think he really wanted anything else. I feel like he liked her for who she was. Um, at a, in a judgment-free zone. So I know I rambled horribly, I think, but hopefully I, my point got across with the arcs of Jeff and Pierce and then Troy and Abed. Um, I, they're the, the, the two people where 11 episodes in, this is where I want them to be for the rest of this series. I don't I like this friendship because it feels real to me. I don't want it to be just like they're best friends and they never argue and they never disagree and they never get jealous with each other. I think that's totally normal. Um, Abed, I don't think would ever be jealous of anybody. He seems more um, secure in himself. You know, he enjoys what he does. He's happy and he just likes people, uh, takes them for who they are, faults and all. Troy is just, he, he was an athlete. And that's how athletes act. I played sports throughout my whole entire life, pretty much until my early 30s. And you're just competitive in any, everything. It doesn't mean that you like have to always win. It's just when you're doing something at that moment, your competitive instinct comes out and you want to be the best. And if you lose, like it, it does hit your ego a little bit, but once it's over, it's over. You just forget about it. You know, it's not like it's going to linger on because you lost the race to your best friend. Um, so again, I love Troy and Abed. Um, not much really to do with Britta this episode or Shirley. They were kind of just like there with Annie. And it was kind of funny that um, seeing as she does play the youngest character here, she's never seen a penis before. But it's funny because as she said, she did, well, she said she had relations. Um, it doesn't mean she had sex, but uh, she just never saw it. So that's, that's kind of funny. But I like how they let her have her moment stating that just because she's uncomfortable talking about it, um, that maybe she's never seen one and that even though it is fine for anyone to say penis, it's just a word, you know, when you're adults, you don't giggle about it, but she doesn't like to do that. And there's nothing wrong with that. So she took agency in herself to say, like, it's fine that you all are comfortable. Like, I'm not comfortable talking about this. I'm comfortable being who I am. And that's, all everyone should just strive for is just be comfortable with who you are. <sighs> That's all I really have to say about this episode. I think I didn't think I was going to have much to talk about, but I did see the theme of kind of like 
growing up and maturing in this. So that's all I have to say about season one, episode 11. Again, this one was called The Politics of Human Sexuality and another great episode. As I said, the writing has been solid and almost perfect since I would probably episode six. Um, I know you all said eventually I would start to like Jeff and I do. He's fine now. Um, I, I just think he's, they write his character a lot better. And I don't know if you agree with me or not. I think they wrote him at the beginning. They, they just didn't want you to like him. Um, and it was kind of in your face. I've said it a couple of times, but I feel like now in retrospect, they just wanted that um, reclamation project storyline for him. But they did it really fast because it's still the midway point of season one. So let me know what you thought of season one, episode 11 of Community. Let me know what you thought of my reaction. I'm sure a lot of you agree or disagree. And I don't mind if you think that what I say is bullshit. I do not mind hearing about it. I just love comments. So let me know in the comments below. Do you agree? Disagree? Did you like the episode? And 11 episodes in uh, right now, what is your favorite episode? Um, I don't know what mine is yet. Last episode was really good. But as always, like and subscribe and hit the notification bell. If you're on Instagram, Twitter, or Hive, come follow me at Screen Sanctum. Happy New Year again, and I'll see you on the next video. Peace, guys.